Everything that has matter has heat. Heat is the movement of thermal energy and you've already learned that heat moves from warmer matter to cooler matter. Today we're going to investigate three specific ways that it moves or transfers. Think about your stoves, toasters, and microwaves. We use all of these to cook our food, but have you ever wondered just how? Conduction, convection, and radiation, that's how. Let's take a look at a real world example. Making spaghetti. First things first, turn on the stove and wait for the flame to appear. Remember, a blue flame is really hot. Lay the raw meat in the metal pan. When the metal pan heats up, the heat will transfer from the hot metal pan to the cold meat and the meat will begin to cook. When the meat turns from pink to brown, you know that your meat is almost done. Some materials conduct heat better than others. Why? When a metal pan is first placed on a stove, and the stove is turned on for a few moments, a person can touch the pan without feeling any discomfort. But as the metal pan heats up, energy moves from the stove burner to the top to the bottom of the pan, then from the bottom of the pan to the metal sides of the pan, and eventually moves up the handle of the pan. All of this seems so simple, but how does it actually work? The heat from the metal pan is transferred to the meat by conduction, just like the heat from the pan is transferred to your hand. Conduction is the movement of thermal energy between two objects that are touching each other. You can't have spaghetti without noodles. After turning the burner on, place the pot full of water on the stove and wait for the water to boil. Remember that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll notice the pasta rises at the top of the pan, gets pushed onto the side, and then sinks to the bottom of the pan, rises again, and so on, moving around in circles from top to bottom in the pot of boiling water. As the water particles at the bottom of the pan heat up, they not only move faster, but they also spread apart. Because the water particles are spread out more, they are said to be less dense than the cooler water at the top. The cooler water at the top sinks and the wa warmer, less dense water rises to the top. As the cooler water sinks, it continues to heat up and moves back to the top. The circular motion continues for as long as the water is being heated up. This happens through convection. Convection is the transfer of heat by the movement of the warmed matter. After all that, bon appetit. Have you ever wondered why you get so warm on a nice spring day? It's not conduction or convection, it's radiation. The source of heat for our planet is the sun. The sun's energy moves through space, then through the Earth's atmosphere, and finally reaches the Earth's surface. The sun's radiation warms the Earth's atmosphere and surface and becomes heat energy. Radiation is the movement of heat via electromagnetic waves through space. Imagine sitting out by a warm fire ready to roast marshmallows with your friends. You quickly notice that not everyone heats up the same way. Some turn golden brown, some become burnt, some even on fire. Where is the best place to put a marshmallow for roasting? How is the heat transferred to the marshmallow? Unlike the processes of conduction and convection, two objects do not have to be in direct contact in order for the transfer of heat to take place. The marshmallow is being heated by infrared radiation. The infrared waves move across the space from the fire to the marshmallow, cooking it slowly and turning it to a golden brown. Radiation also occurs just by sitting by the fire and it warms your body. We've seen three specific examples of conduction, convection, and radiation. It's important to keep in mind that in most situations, more than one method of heat transfer takes place. When you're cooking over the fire, the water inside the pan is heated through convection. Your hand on the pan becomes warm through conduction, and the heat that is being given off from the fire is radiation. The radiation is also what is warming the pan. Oftentimes in winter, we build fires in our homes. Sitting by the fire, you become warm because of radiation. To make the fire bigger, a metal tool is used to touch the wooden logs and the metal tool becomes hot. That's conduction. When the fire heats up the room, the hot air rises and we turn on our fan to cool it off. As the air circles, that's convection.